Russia's aviation narrative has been one of self-reliance and revival for the majority of the past decade. The Russified Superjet variants and the long-promised MC-21 medium-range airliner have been depicted as symbols of industrial revival, indigenous aircraft that would eliminate dependence on Western suppliers and re-establish a domestic commercial aviation sector. In practice, the transition from declarative independence to operational aircraft has proven challenging. The MC-21's complete certification using only local resources has been pushed back even more due to the complicated task of changing important systems, problems with the supply chain, and changes in funding, according to the latest reports from Russian industry insiders and aviation experts. The delay has significant implications for Russia's industrial strategy, airline fleet plans, and production timetables. Certification is the fundamental issue at hand, the process by which regulators confirm the safety and airworthiness of an aircraft. Russian aviation authorities and industry leaders had previously expressed optimism about the imminent delivery of domestically sourced MC-21s. However, the certification window continues to narrow as engineers strive to replace a small number of intricate systems that are still reliant on foreign designs or materials. Anti-icing and meteorological radar systems, specific collision warning functions, and power supply subsystems are among the systems that remain to be entirely domestic. These are not superficial modifications. They are critical systems that necessitate substantial development time, extensive ground tests, and numerous flight hours for integration and testing. These processes cannot be expedited without introducing risk. A single unlucky component does not cause this problem. The MC-21 program exemplifies the structural challenge of re-establishing advanced civilian aerospace capabilities following decades of global integration and diminished capacity. Historically, the civil aerospace industry of Russia has been dependent on an international ecosystem, which includes component suppliers, avionics specialists, software developers, material scientists, and toolmakers who are spread throughout Europe, North America, and Asia. After 2022, Russian planners implemented a rapid import substitution program as a result of sanctions and geopolitical rupture, which severed multiple connections. That approach necessitated the establishment of new domestic supply chains and the replacement of entire subsystems. Although politically popular and symbolically significant, this method fails to address an industrial reality. The development of flight-critical avionics, precisely tuned radio frequency hardware, and robust integrated systems that meet the standards of contemporary commercial aviation necessitates extensive testing, decades of incremental industrial learning, and a significant investment of time. Financing and industrial prioritization have exerted substantial influence, in addition to the technical complexity. In recent years, a significant portion of Russia's aerospace capacity has been allocated to defense production, which is primarily funded by state budgets and political urgency. State programs often assign civil aviation a lower priority and experience funding reductions or reallocations. Budget constraints and aggressive schedules either cause program delays or insufficient parallelization of work streams. The industry may need to wait until 2027 or later to deliver completely domestic aircraft due to a conservative and realistic timetable for full import replacement and certification for MC-21. The delay is an acknowledgement that the industry requires a period of tranquility to complete testing and coordinate suppliers. Additionally, the situation of the MC-21 cannot be interpreted in isolation. A useful analogy is the initiative to Russify the Sukhoi Superjet 100, which is commonly referred to as the SJ-100 or Superjet NU in its reworked form. This initiative involves the replacement of the Franco-Russian SAM-146 engine and other Western components with Russian alternatives including the Aviad Vigatel PD-8 engine and domestically sourced avionics and subsystems. The PD-8 has been developed and flight testing of PD-8-equipped superjet prototypes has occurred, 
indicating a significant engineering effort and a significant technological accomplishment. Thus, the program has advanced. However, the substitute path also introduced new complications, the necessity to extend the service life of the older SAM-46 engines through interim maintenance measures, requalify service networks, and confront the reality that a Russified aircraft, despite being certified domestically, is faced with a constrained export market due to sanctions and limited acceptance abroad. In summary, the regulatory, service, and market ecosystems are not the only factors that influence the production of an aircraft with domestic components. Substituting foreign systems on modern airliners is exceedingly challenging due to three structural factors. Substitution frequently necessitates the re-architecting of systems to ensure that they are compatible with existing airframes, in addition to reverse engineering. The integration of modern avionics and safety systems is extensive. Any modifications to the radar or warning system necessitate recalibration and validation of the human-machine interfaces and flight control systems. Secondly, the production of components to aviation tolerances necessitates the use of specialized tooling, materials, and testing equipment, areas in which decades-old capability gaps cannot be resolved overnight. Third, the certification regime is inherently conservative. Regulators necessitate comprehensive test evidence to substantiate that a new or modified system satisfies safety margins in both normal and failure modes. However, this conservatism is intentionally designed to safeguard passengers and crews, although it can be exasperating for schedule managers. These are not trivial or political obstacles. Rather, they are technical realities that must be acknowledged. These delays have repercussions on both the political and economic spheres. The uncertainty of timetables for airlines exacerbates fleet planning, leasing decisions, and maintenance strategies. Aeroflot and other carriers that were identified as potential launch customers for Russified types must balance the desire to modernize the domestic fleet with the operational risk of integrating aircraft that may require complex retrofit programs for in-service aircraft or face certification delays. The state is concerned about the feasibility of the projected production scales, which were previously set at dozens of aircraft per year, as well as the credibility of industrial policy and the return on investment due to the extended timelines. Political messaging has historically employed ambitious early objectives, which the industry has repeatedly revised downward as it confronts reality. In the near future, experts anticipate that output rates will be more modest. Nevertheless, a more objective assessment reveals substantial achievements. Progress on engines such as the PD-8, test flights of import-substituted prototypes, and steps toward the formation of a domestic supply chain are all examples of non-trivial technological and organizational improvements. Russian engineers and managers emphasize the tangible benefits of validated flight hours and the progressive replacement of vulnerable foreign parts, whereas outside observers or critics only observe delay. The tempo is not identical to that of international programs conducted in unconstrained markets. However, incremental capability development is underway. The defining characteristic of Russia's civil aerospace endeavor following the sanctions is this combination of progress and constraint. Doubts regarding scale, sustainability, and export prospects coexist with the engineering accomplishment of flight tests. What are the most possible immediate consequences? Certification delays for the MC-21 to a date beyond 2026 are both possible and even probable if the final integration and validation of substituted systems take longer than anticipated. To mitigate spare parts shortages and maintenance bottlenecks, Russia will persist in its efforts to re-engineer and import substitute existing types such as the Superjet. These initiatives will produce prototypes and limited serial production, but current geopolitical circumstances will continue to restrict mass export markets. Military production will likely remain the primary industrial focus, which may result in civil programs competing for resources 
and a slower expansion than initially anticipated. The most realistic projection is a phased ramp-up, with modest production in the late 2020s rather than imminent large runs due to the combined pressures. To achieve Russia's objective of a civil aviation sector that is both resilient and capable of producing and supporting modern airliners at a large scale, policymakers and industry leaders must more consistently align three elements. Realistic funding that supports parallel supplier development, long-term horizons for capability building, rather than short political timelines, and international engagement to maintain the robustness of certification and service ecosystems. The state will be required to determine whether to accept smaller production runs, which are supported by deep domestic maintenance and spares networks, or to invest heavily to rapidly scale up manufacturing and testing capacities in the event that international engagement is restricted by sanctions. The latter option is costly and may still be constrained by skilled labor and material shortages. The MC-21 presents managers with clear compromises, proving that these decisions are no longer hypothetical. Lastly, there is a strategic perspective. A completely domestically producible aircraft program is not only a geopolitical tool but also an industrial prize. It signals technological sovereignty and provides leverage in bilateral relationships with friendly states. However, if this sovereignty results in an aircraft that is operationally fragile, underproduced, or uncertified, it would be a hollow victory. The more pragmatic approach, which involves the development of enduring domestic capacity while being transparent about timelines and constraints, provides superior long-term value. This pragmatic course appears to be being followed by Russia's aviation industry, albeit at a slower pace than initially anticipated and with tangible consequences for political narratives and production targets. In conclusion, the MC-21 delays are not the result of a conspiracy or an accident. They are indicative of the rigorous mathematics of supply chain reconstruction, certification, and engineering. They also reveal the policy options that lie ahead, either accelerate the process through increased investment and tolerate the resulting short-term strain, or accept a slower, more consistent rebuild of capability. Either course of action impacts production numbers, airline planning, and Russia's capacity to assert technological independence in civil aviation. The most credible forecast at this time is to exercise patience, anticipate incremental progress, additional test evidence, and a realistic, albeit delayed, emergence of domestically configured civil aircraft, one meticulously certified flight hour at a time. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us,